Hello and welcome to another episode. In this one, we're going to talk about something that's a little <laughs> overdue. Um, but we're going to talk about type annotations in Python and how you can use them and some tools that might be helpful for you in getting started with them. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so we're going to talk about type annotations today. Uh, there is a pep that is associated with this and where most of the information that if you want to find like stuff about type annotations, like this is what you search. Um, and that's PEP 484, which talks about type ints. Uh, I'm not going to go over the contents of the PEP. I'm just going to talk about like the, the, the TLDR. So a long while ago, and I don't actually know the full history of this because I was not really involved in the typing scene until relatively recently. Uh, but a long time ago, a tool was created called MyPy and it introduced kind of a, uh, a a comment like syntax which allowed you to you know annotate your code and say like these functions should return these types and like uh and it would take those annotations and then validate them at or validate them statically so before you run your code and it was kind of like a, a tool to make it so that your code is like you know, you have an extra sense of of correctness before you go to prod um I've actually been seeing this trend a lot in other languages as well. So like TypeScript is a good example of, of like, you know, take JavaScript and apply some amount of static typing on top of it. And then you get, you know, a, a, a better language out of it. Uh, but also there was like flow typed in JavaScript. There's like some, there's like a Ruby equivalent of this. Um, but like, you know, type annotations, they're, they're cool, even in dynamic languages. Um, but yeah, let me just like do a quick intro of the various types of type annotations. I know that sounds silly. Um, and then how you can set up MyPy and run it against some of your code. And I'll also show, you, also show you some of the common settings that I use when I do MyPy stuff. There's gonna be a bunch of videos that I'm gonna do about various typing topics. So if you guys wanna see more, let me know. Um, I've, I've actually already done a couple of them. But anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's start by opening up a Python file. Um, <clears throat> so first off, let's introduce like the old way of doing type annotations. So the, the Python 2 compatible and, you know, when you have to do it, sometimes the, the Python 3.5 and below compatible way. And, uh, the way to do that is with type comments. So let's say we have a function, I don't know, square. That's, that's an interesting function. <laughs> Turn X times X. I don't know. Not, not a very interesting function. Um, and without this, this function, you know, isn't really documented to do anything with a particular type. However, you might imagine that X is a number and it should return a number. And in BiPy, the way you would do this, or at least the, the old way with type comments, is you would make a type comment, uh, which is just prefixed with type colon. And in this case, we're gonna annotate this signature. And so it's a float that returns a float. And this parenthesized thing kind of represents these arguments here. So if you had like maybe, I don't know, <laughs> Two arguments here, although you wouldn't do that for a square function, you would, you know, fill out both of these there. <laughs> Dang it, my Twitch notifications are still on. Ah, uh, I need to, I need to fix my scenes. This is two videos in a row that I've messed this up. Anyway, um, so this is how you would maybe like annotate a, a function that takes two floats and returns a float. And these are just type expressions. So any, any um, type that you have, um, in your code, you can represent here with the type comments. So this is kind of the old way to do this. Uh, this is no longer super necessary if you're targeting, you know, Python 3.6 and above, or even just Python 3 and above. Um, the the new way to do this. So this is kind of like Python 2 compatible way compatible. And if we want to do the Python 3 way to annotate the same function, uh, and there's actually some tools that will automatically upgrade these for you. I want to call. I want to say they're called retype. I don't remember, but there's there's a cool tool that will, you know, switch these type comments into type annotations. And if we annotate this here. So we actually have two new things here. So this is a, uh, a parameter annotation. So you can see that it's a colon followed by the type name and same same here. And we have a return type annotation. This is with an arrow and and this here. And on their own, these do nothing. They're basically glorified comments. They're not, they're not much different than this here. And, uh, you know, I, I find that even without a type checker that annotating functions is helpful just to like 
show what you're trying to do and kind of introduce the types there. Uh, it can also help your IDE figure out like what, what types these are and give you some tab completion and other stuff there. So that, that can be pretty useful. Uh, but this syntax was added in Python 3, added in Python 3.x, and it didn't really do anything then. It was mostly just like, oh, MyPy has a similar syntax. Let's make this a first-class citizen with the expectation that later we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be able to formalize this type annotation thing and like make it a, a first-class citizen. And that's kind of what PEP 484 was, was um, formalizing that, that definition. And you can see that PEP 484 didn't even land until Python 3.5, which brings us to our next sort of topic here. And that's what changed in Python 3.5 is we got access to a typing module, which made it a lot easier to represent a lot of the types. And so PEP 484 talks about some of the types that were introduced as part of that typing module. And I want to say before then you could pip install typing and like you could still use it that way, but this made like a, a set of you know, generic types that were easier to use. So let's, um, oh, what, we'll make um, I don't know, some other function that's like, you know, log some string, and we're gonna log it to an optional file or standard out, something like that. So we'll use a keyword only argument and file equals none. Um, so this is how you would write it without an annotation. You would hug this here and maybe this returns none. So it, it has no return value, so now, to be, to be more correct, it probably should have been type of none, uh, but there's just kind of a, a shortcut there uh, since none is a singleton. And the way you would do this, let's actually use file name so it's easier. Uh, the way you would do, you would annotate this none here is you would colon uh, and you would use optional stir. And this is a type that will actually import from the typing module. So from typing import optional. And this is how you would annotate a function that, you know, sometimes takes a string here, but otherwise is nullable. So optional is, it's its a little bit weird uh, to, to talk about optional because it's its not, in this case, uh, well, it is is—it is optional in this case, but um, it really means nullable in Python or none, nonnable since Python doesn't really have null, but um, none is Python's null. Anyway, uh, but this is how you would annotate like a, an optional. There's also a whole bunch of types in the typing module that allow you to annotate more things. Uh, and that brings us to the next thing, which is added. So this, the, the typing module. Uh, typing module was added in Python 3.5. Uh, the next thing that we get is variable annotations and those were added in Python 3.6. Uh, this is actually one of the many reasons that I try and target Python 3.6 and above in all of my code, because I find that sometimes variable annotations are necessary and I really don't like these type comments. Uh, but a variable annotation allows you to just, you know, annotate an individual variable. It looks basically the same as these parameter annotations, uh, but sometimes you can use it for useful things like, you know, class annotations or local variable annotations if you need to disambiguate. Um, and one really cool thing that came out of this is this m somewhat magical name tuple class. Uh, so now you can do this. Oops, that's supposed to be colon. And just by annotating this here, both uh, both Python, which implements this name tuple class, as well as MyPy knows the proper types that happen here. Um, and it's a nice little succinct way to define this class. But that was added in Python 3.6. Um, there's actually some new typing stuff that's coming in Python 3.9. And in Python 3.9, um, <clears throat> one of the like kind of clunky things about the old way you had to annotate some classes is uh, you had to import, let's say if you had a dictionary, you had to import dict in order to annotate them. So let's say um, print items, uh, which takes a dict and that's a dict, let's say it's a dictionary of stir stir. This is a way that you specify generics in um, in MyPy's typing uh, with, with square brackets. So let's say this is you know another function that returns none. Uh, so this is kind of the old way to do this, um, old way. Uh, but in Python 3.9, the built-in types now have this get item, so you can uh, generically use just the standard built-ins, which is pretty cool because it saves a lot of these imports, which some people find annoying. Uh, but anyway, that's that's kind of the rundown of all of the typing stuff that has, you know, happened at a high level so far. Uh, let's talk next about MyPy uh, and what MyPy gives you. 
virtual nvm. Uh, so first off, MyPy is a package that you have to install. So you need to pip install MyPy. There are many type trackers in Python. Uh, MyPy is just the one that I happen to use. There's also what? This is a face. There's one by Facebook. There's one by Microsoft, and there's one by Google. <laughs> Everyone's invented a type checker at this point. Um, I tend to use MyPy just because I'm the most familiar with it, and I, you know, kind of understand how it works, and I've used it quite a bit. But anyway, uh, w when you've defined a function like this, you can run MyPy on it, and it will validate your types for you. You can see we have errors here: email types and assignment, ellipsis, expected int. Yeah, so you can see like it's already you know, validating some of my problems here. Um, it doesn't know about the Python 3.9 stuff, or maybe it does, but I'm running Python 3.8, so it's it's talking about this. Actually, what happens if we do Python version 3.9? Huh. Well then, <laughs> I guess my Pi needs an update here, but w whatever, anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't know about this syntax here, so. Um, and you can see, like, once once you've satisfied all of the types there, it'll tell you that everything is passed. Now, just, like, some quick stuff with MyPy that uh, we already saw, like, an error here. Uh, one thing that you can do in MyPy to sort of debug what's going on is use the reveal type built-in. It's a built-in in MyPy, but it's not an actual type in normal Python. So uh, when you call reveal type on something, MyPy will produce an error that tells you what that type is. So let's say... I don't know, we made a name tuple above uh, one, two, oh boy. <laughs> and we wanna see what the type of Y is. And, or, or we wanna see what MyPy thinks the type of Y is. And so you can see here when we run uh, mypyt.py, it says revealed type is builtins.int. And this is just kind of demonstrating that MyPy knows how to inference this function. Uh, now, working with a type checker can be a little bit daunting, so the design of how MyPy works is everything is gradual typing. That is, it will only check the functions that are annotated and uh, won't check other functions. But you can enable a like check everything mode. So like there's a there's a setting that I use. Uh, if we look at my setup.cfg here, these are the settings that I use for MyPy. So like check untyped defs is like try and validate code even if it's not annotated. Um, yeah, and these are some other settings. I'll go over those other settings in some other video. But anyway, that's kind of like a crash course on getting started in typing. So if, if you get nothing out of this video, like there are glorified comments that you can apply a type checker to. Uh, and they're they're new and, you know, I find that they help make me write more correct code and make it a lot easier to refactor stuff. Anyway, I enjoy typing. Hopefully you guys will too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.